This is one of my revival vans, and this is gonna become my brand new race van. Now, we're not gonna be using any of the original rival bits because, well, I don't think they're gonna be reliable long-term, plus there's probably not enough power in them. So we're gonna pull this in now and get it in the unit on the ramp, do a quick talk, talk through. Then we're gonna take apart this drivetrain out of the race van because I've been told by some of the old arrival employees there's something very special going on inside of here that no one knows about. So, let's go. This is really, really heavy, Chris. It is heavy, isn't it? This hasn't got all the spares in the back of it, has it? It's full of blue and sand bags. <laughs> <laughs> Do you reckon there's sand in them? I reckon they're lead, I don't reckon they're sand. A lead pellet. Probably, <laughs> come from a rival, I bet these were like... Gold. 100 pound sandbags, yeah, each? They're probably gold, gold pellet. Yeah. I ain't going nowhere. We're safe. <laughs> looking at the light is not a good place to be looking. Keep going up. A bit more? Yeah. That'll do. That'll do. Well, it's not very high. This thing looks very, very heavy, doesn't it, Nick? It looks very different to what we've seen before. Yeah, so the other van we had up on the last episode was a, a van 16 built, which obviously all this was billet, all this was cast, was very different. This is van number two, and everything is steel. Box section, welded. I mean, this anti-roll bar probably weighs 100 kilos in its own, and then you've got these little tiny, tiny drop links. Oh, yeah, that's no. hilarious. <laughs> it's definitely the weak spot there. <laughs> Um, yeah, so they definitely made a lot of changes as they went on, but this thing must be ridiculously heavy. So in a minute, before we do anything, we will get this corner weight in and find out how heavy this thing is. Um, I mean, look at the size of the battery pack. It's a very, very big pack. It's massive. But it means there should be plenty of room inside for us to repopulate it with different modules to get to our 800 volts that we need for our new drivetrain solution, which I'm not going to tell you much information on, but we're going to have 1,200 brake horsepower which will be 600 brake horsepower at either end. And I think we're gonna need it looking at how heavy this thing's gonna be. Now, the plan is to pull this out because I have been told by an old arrival engineer that this might actually be a two-speed gearbox. And I'd be quite interested to find out as to whether it is a two-speed because that was something Tesla was trying to do for years with the Roadster and never quite perfected. So it'd be quite interesting to see if arrival managed it. Looking up here, Nick, these look like it's got coilovers on it already. It does, but it looks like they're already wound fully down, so we're not going to gain any lowering ability from them. But whoever wound them all the way down, that's how they should always Good be. Good person. Yeah. I'm going to just wander down. Right, this is difficult. I'm not wandering down. <laughs> Bear with me, viewers. It looks like the rear subframe's very similar to the front because it's actually got steering rack or steering arms here with no rack. So we could make it rear wheel steering, Nick. Big cross beam here, which I think we've probably going to have to remove, aren't we? to get the new motor up in, but we can always rebuild it all. And it looks like they've put reinforcing on the top of the strut towers, because it's all cast. It looks like they've reinforced it with additional bits of steel to make it even stronger, which for a race fan is not a bad idea. Right, let's lower it down, corner weight it, and see how heavy this thing is. Time for corner weights. While you gather in, we're gonna be weighing. So the plate on it says 2.2 without the sandbags. <laughs> Little switch Flick the of the there. switch. That is not what it says on the nameplate. 2.6, pretty much. That's heavy. That is very, very heavy. What's this one called, Nick? Guido. <laughs> I don't know if you've got a license for that. It's an odd stud pattern. I don't know if this is, might be the same as my Navara. It's a maybe six by 114. Look at the size of this. That's because this was the two-wheel van. It was the two-wheel van, because it's got this hole here. Where they had the stilts, it's like the, the stabilizers, that I means this them. van was designed to go on two wheels. Or to do stunts. To do least. stunts and jumps. So we could wind suspension all the way up, couldn't we? We could, and there's also that little nipple there, look. Put Sorry. some air in, let some air out, maybe. Yep. I don't know an awful lot about suspension, but... I'm sure someone will tell us in the comments. I'll bet there's a YouTube video. What have you found there? <laughs> I found a one inch socket that fits, and I found the one inch impact gun. So this is like Guido Mark II. <laughs> <laughs> well, that made light work of it. That was easy. <laughs> yes. Do the other side. This beauty could be used for snapping all sorts of things off. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> this might not go to plan. 
I'm going to take the gearbox oil out so that when we remove the drive shafts, it doesn't go everywhere, but it doesn't mean it's not going to go everywhere whilst I'm trying to remove it because I can't actually get our proper drain tank under it, our oil to catch tank, because the van's too low. Oh. Yeah, that wasn't so bad. Why is it's it green? A, it's a horrible green colour. It's like the stuff they put in the power steering on the old VW, isn't it? Look at it. Yeah, we'll disconnect the HV bits. Cut them. Just cut them. Scrap no, yard Nicholas. Style. Breakers yard style. In the, we're not doing breakers yard style. For everybody at home, this is not how you cut HV cables. I hope you had your safety squint safety on. Safety squints were all right. <laughs> We've got one or two bits of copper in there. That was definitely quicker than trying to find uh, the loppers. Yep. Don't do that, Ian. Just try and do the ones you can. Uh, well. Yep. Three quarters of the time looking for tools, the other quarter of the time is actually doing some work. Nut. Is this sacrificial at this point? You put the nut back on. No, you put the nut back on because if you damage the threads, you can wind the nut back off. We need a copper mallet. I'm gonna go search toolbox. See if just by any sort of luck, it might be in it. Oh, that's what we need. And strike. You got the angle correct? What are you doing? Don't go in there. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. He's loose. So now we're going to remove the bottom of the shark. Everything's coming off, isn't it? It's like one of those things where you go, I'm sure I can do it without taking the subframe out, and you get four hours in, and guess what? You have to take the subframe out. Yes, you do. Oh, that is the movement we need. So after all that, I had to put the camera down to give you a, a hand because it was a four-handed job. It is actually, but it is now. now out of the hub. It's just how does it come out of there now? That is definitely just like a lever bar kind of job. It's not a very good lever bar. No, it's, it's a flipping crowbar. Yeah, it's like a Home Alone bar. Hey, here we go. We're waiting. Hey. Uh, that's not what I was expecting. You expected a longer shaft, didn't you? I expected it to come out the gearbox end down here. Maybe like you need to. Like it's here. Like it, it'll drop off with it. Well, yeah, but I expected this to just be yeah, a bearing yeah. in line, not to be an actual joint. Yeah. Oh, look at that. That's how I expected the drove shaft to come out. It's on coolant duty. You're very close. Let's see if it gets a wet armpit. Oh, that, oh, you're getting me. <laughs> <laughs> that is literally the worst <laughs> catch tray ever. <laughs> it's like iron brew in there. It doesn't taste like iron brew. No, it's quite sweet actually. You got my trolley. Got your trolley. I'm hoping with the wood on here, I don't think it's going to be high enough, but we can just get lower it onto this table. Think, oh, 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 something's clicking. Oh, oh. oh, I think we're free. Now we've got this drive unit out of the van, we're gonna start stripping it apart and see what secrets it has hidden inside. We're gonna start with the inverter cover, which I'm presuming the inverter cover because there's a big DC lines going in here and I don't see where the AC lines go. So I'm hoping in here we can see some rather clever power electronics. DC lens coming in here, in which one drops around here and does this side of the IGBT bank, the other one's dropping down and doing the other side of the IGBT bank, and then we've got our three phases here which go out and into our motor. Look how scarily close. This is positive and negative right here. I have found that these are great for storing nuts and bolts, or long-term lots of dirt from the road. There they are, that's what I wanted to see. That's a lot of IGBTs, but this did have a very long continuous running. So that's probably why it has so many of them. So 
So that is either an encoder or a resolver. Can't remember which type, depends on what type of mode this is. Sort of thing that Iron Man has on his chest here, I think. Maybe we didn't get all the oil out. There's a lot more gears in there than you'd normally find in a single speed gearbox. That does not look to me like a single speed gearbox. That's oh, coming. Well, that's heavy. Look at that. That was not what I think anyone was expecting to see inside of this. I finally worked out how this works. So you have motor here with this unit. This has got like wiggles in it, or wiggles. And what it does is as the motor goes to one position, it pushes a set of pins into say this gear, which engages this ring, which locks onto that central gear there, which is locked into this main shaft, or that can disengage. It can then free wheel. So these can spin freely with that. So it's basically a neutral, or these pins here can lock in this side, disengage from that side, and tie this smaller gear into that center shaft to then drive it. So it's a very clever way of doing a two-speed gearbox with a neutral. The only thing is your timing has to be absolutely perfect on the motor so you don't shear things off when you're driving it. Now, did it really work? No one will ever really know. But if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. Coming soon, we'll have 1,200 brake horsepower packed into that van and it's gonna be absolutely insane. So thanks for watching. And me and Nick will see you again very soon.